Hi everyone, today we're going to be talking a little bit about investment demand. So the focus here is going to be on gross private investment and the a new curve we're going to look at, the investment demand curve. So what is investment? We've already talked about this a little bit, but it's money spent on uh, money spent or expenditures on things like new plants, factories, uh, capital equipment, machinery, technology, hardware, software, new homes and inventories, goods that will be sold by producers. One of the important things to know about investment is that it will vary more greatly than consumption because unlike consumption which you generally have to do um, you can put off investment so gross private investment will generally in an economy vary a little bit more than consumption now I want to talk a little bit about expected rates of return. So how does a business make investment decisions? They do what's called a cost-benefit analysis. And firms will decide to do something if the benefits exceed the costs. And so how does business determine the benefits? They look at the expected rates of return. And how do they count the costs? They look at, it. They look at interest costs. So why would a business decide to invest because the rate of return is going to be greater than the interest cost. So if the rate of return on the investment is greater than the interest cost, they will invest. If not, they will not. So how does a business determine the amount of investment they undertake? They compare uh, expected rate of return to interest costs. So like I said previously, if expected return is greater than interest costs, you invest. If expected return is less than interest costs, you are not going to invest if you're a business. Now I want to really quickly review over real versus nominal interest rates. So remember, nominal is the observable rate of interest. Real is going to subtract out inflation. It is only no, known ex post facto. It's known after the fact. It's only after you know the inflation rate that you will know what your real rate of interest is. So how do you compute the real rate of interest, that R percentage? Remember, you have the equation of the real interest rate is equal to the nominal rate minus the inflation rate. So what then determines the cost of an investment decision? It is the real interest rate. This is the rate that businesses and economists are going to care about. Now, I want to take a look at the investment demand curve. So what is the shape of the investment demand curve? It is downward sloping, and why is that? It's because when interest rates are high, you have fewer investments that are profitable, and when interest rates are low, more investment is going to be profitable, so firms are going to invest more. Conversely, there are few investments that yield high rates of return when interest rates are high, but many that will yield low rates of return. So let's take a look at this curve. So we have the investment demand curve, and on your y-axis you're going to have your real interest rate, on your x-axis you're going to have gross private investment, and you're going to have a downward sloping curve called the investment demand curve, which you will call ID. So as the real interest rate changes, you're going to be moving along your investment demand curve. And then there are going to be 
things that are going to actually determinants that are actually going to shift that entire investment demand curve. So like I said, changes in the real interest rate are going to cause changes in gross private investment as you move from point to point on the curve. And then there are factors other than that real interest rate, which may shift that entire investment demand curve. So as an example, let's say you have 5% real interest rate at that um, in real interest rate, you have $2 trillion worth of in gross private investment in an economy. If you lower the real interest rate to uh, 3%, it's now cheaper to borrow and invest, so therefore you're going to have more gross private investment. You're going to have, in this case, $3 trillion worth of gross private investment. Now, you can't have a shift in the investment demand curve. We're going to talk about those determinants that will do that in a minute. Uh, but when you when investment demand curve shifts, you're going to have a different level of gross private investment occurring, even though the real interest rate is going to remain constant. So let's say you at four percent real interest rate, you have two point five trillion dollars worth of gross private investment. Um, let's say the investment demand curve shifts to the right to ID one. So now at that same real interest rate, after the shift, four percent real interest rate, you have three point two five trillion dollars worth of gross private investment at that same real interest rate after the shift in investment demand. So let's look at some of the uh, factors that will shift the investment demand curve, some of these determinants of investment demand. So cost of production is a big one. If you have a lower cost of production, that means it's going to be more profitable um, to invest there. Um, so lower costs are going to shift investment demand to the right. Higher cost is going to shift investment demand to the left because investment is going to cost more. Business taxes. Lower business taxes creates an environment where people uh, and businesses want to invest, so the investment demand curve shifts to the right. Higher business taxes is going to do the opposite, shifts it to the left. Then you have technology change. New technology is um, going to encourage people to invest. Investment demand shifts to the right. Lack of it is going to shift it to the left. And finally, you have um, stock of capital. So if an economy is low on capital, uh, remember when we're talking about capital, we're talking about factories and tools and that kind of stuff. Um, then in order to create that capital, you're going to have more investment. So the investment demand curve is going to shift to the right. If an economy already has a plethora of capital, then the invest investment demand curve is going to shift to the left. And then you have expectations. Positive expectations is going to encourage, encourage investment. Investment demand shifts to the right. Negative expectations is going to shift the investment demand curve to the left. All right, we're going to go ahead and move on to our next video here.